Well, hello all you lovely people out there in shiny DVD land. Uh, I'm Nick Kirk and I'm the co-writer, co-producer, co-editor, co-director, boom boy, and I also play in this Dave. Yes, hello there. I'm Richard Allison. I'm the other co-writer, director, producer, <laughs> editor, boom boy, tea maker. And you play mysterious agent number one. I am. I am indeed an agent, a special agent. So, so here we are. This is um, Nick, who's playing TJ, outside of um, Saravet's castle in Veliko Tonovo, and. And I'm going to ask you a question here, Rich, actually, yep. to start off, because this is the one thing I always get asked. Yep. Why on earth did we go and film this in Bulgaria? Well, I would say, why not? <laughs> Good answer. I like you. <laughs> Brevity. Um, probably the real reason is uh, our executive producer, Andrew Roberts, uh, I think a couple of years before we decided to make this film, uh, purchased some property in uh, Bulgaria. In the, in this town mm. that we are that we made the film on, so he had good knowledge of the town um, and the locations, and he had good contacts throughout the uh, the city. So, and he, he also, I mean, his one of his main selling points to us was that it just looks fantastic and looks like uh, it looks unlike any other location you're likely to use. I mean, the the problem you get with a lot of low to no budget films is they're all shot in and around the same locations in London. Exactly, it's, it's, it was also an incentive or a motivational factor to, to get um, cast and crew on board and, and ourselves worked up and fired up about the film, I think. Yeah, I think so. It's just yeah, um, if, if it didn't have that kind of wow factor with, with nine days location shoot <laughs> on, in Bulgaria. Yeah, it's it, it hard to kind of maintain it, yeah. a lot of motivation. Um, so here's a kind of glimpse of all the various university flashback scenes that will come up during the uh, rest of the film, um, which we filmed at our production person's flat, our sort of production designer, Hannah. It was uh, her student flat at the time. Um, if you look very carefully, there's various people from the crew in there. There's Faye, our makeup person. Um, who you can see coming up uh, right about now. There she is, over her own credit, or <laughs> under her own credit, rather. Um, yeah, and that's me yeah. dancing badly. Um, <clears throat> and this was towards the end of the shoot, wasn't it? This was one of the last days of the shoot, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. Um, by which point everyone was getting a little bit tired, having bit, shot continuously ranges, for two definitely. weeks. So it was quite good to have this kind of fun stuff to shoot towards the end where everyone could just go a bit nuts and do what they wanted. Um, for this sort of party sequence, we literally just said to people, right, we're going to turn the camera on you for five minutes and just go mental. Um, so I think for them, this was a nice little way to unwind. Uh -huh. yeah. But... Um, I guess I guess one of the key things we should probably talk about is the inspiration behind the film, why we decided to make it, and why mm. this film. Um, I think I think it was partly a desire to go back to basics, wasn't it? Really, um, it, it's kind of along the lines of something you first wrote years and years ago, the first yeah. sort of feature-length script you wrote. Uh, which Just something that would be simple, mm. simple and dialogue heavy, so it, yeah. it didn't involve too many, you know, special effects either. Yeah, nothing too in practical effects and and after effects as well. Yeah, special effects. Um, and also something that was quite character driven, um, yeah. because we were determined this time um, that we would actually use proper actors rather than just getting our friends in to help us out, which has been our usual technique throughout yeah. the years. Um, and we thought if we had something that had some sort of decent characters for people to um, to sort of sink their teeth into, then they're more likely to give up, give up their free time. Uh, one of the one of the main things being this was made for as little money as, as we could. We weren't able to pay people, so everyone very kindly gave up. Uh, gave up their time for free to be in this to help out on it um, 
so I think we we knew we had to kind of come up with something pretty pretty actor driven in order to yeah. entice yeah. them in. Yeah. Um, Some good monologues and the yeah. dramatic punches. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, equal. I mean, as well, it's it's an ensemble piece as well. There's yeah. It, there's four or five really good parts there. Yeah, rather than one yeah. starring role, I'd yeah, say exactly. it's very much yeah. sort of. Um, driven by the the group rather than a single a single actor or character which helps spread the risk for us as well in case exactly in case any, someone any would dropped out or was or injured or yeah. you know um, having said that we did manage to injure one of the actors on the very first day of shooting <laughs> and uh, we'll come <laughs> back to right. that a little bit later actually I think because uh you'll be able to see the specific moment, moment where he gets injured <laughs> a little bit later in the film. So there's a little tease for you there to keep listening to this commentary because we'll come up with something, I'm sure. Um, I think the other the other inspiration behind the story itself was a kind of couple of things that came together sort of three, three and a half years ago when we first started working on this. You just um, missed my entrance there. I did, actually. That was, that was you. Um, that was you and your brother lurking yes. in the background as mysterious agents. Um, yes, and if you look throughout the film, you'll see them at a couple of points. Um, the two agents are there. They're also in the bar later on. Um, and that was one of the key things we wanted with this film, was it for when you for when you go back and watch it a second time, for you to pick up on all these kind of little bits that we've threaded throughout that tie it all back together. Um, and it's the kind of... it's it's the two interlinked nights not even just the the reunion night it's the links between this night and the party at university sort of 10 years ago um, there's lots of kind of little individual yeah. little links that i think become clearer once you go back and and rewatch it there's uh, our That's exec producer andy, yeah. andy uh we had to give him a part to keep him happy yep and uh jay who's playing um will there i think he was quite happy to be beating up the exec producer <laughs> It's never. <laughs> um, yeah, they spent a lot of time rehearsing. They did. <laughs> Mostly whilst drunk, to be fair. But you know, they did spend a lot of work. On it. They're method actors. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, they took it seriously. Yeah, um, but yeah, I think the going back to the sort of inspirations behind it, there were two kind of key things that we wanted to get across. One was for for both of us, it was coming up to ten years since we'd left university. Um, I know a group of my friends were talking about things like having reunions and that sort of thing, even though I actually see them all fairly frequently. Um, so that was quite nice. We liked the idea of a reunion of a group of people coming back together again, because that gave you a kind of instant, you know, um, an, an instant way to... It's a dramatic um, situation. Yeah, and it's straight it, off the bat. Yeah. It also, also, if the characters are catching up with each other, then the audience is is given sort of an easy way into their lives if they're using this to kind of reminisce and catch up. Um, otherwise, if they sat around just talking about, you know, things that had happened, it, it becomes a bit expositional and you know heavy-handed that you're trying to crowbar these things in. Um, and the other thing was, I I went to a friend's wedding. Uh, which can only accurately be described as utter carnage. Um, and the group of us spent about two weeks trying to piece together what had happened and various fragments started coming to light which then painted other events in a different light once you knew one thing had happened another thing made more sense. Um, and that then kind of gave us the structure, didn't it, of you know this flipping back and forth so that they're piecing things together the next morning but also you as you're watching it you're piecing it together yeah. sort of bit by bit um. <laughs> yeah because another reference point was a, like a Stephen King novel mm. which with interwoven uh, characters from the past and the present yeah so kind of something yeah. like um, It where it, you've got that sort of one, yeah flipping back and forth between the two different times um, we had to map it all out on a on a roll of um, yeah, on quite a long roll of paper, <laughs> wallpaper. Um, yeah. yeah, basically like a bit of yeah wallpaper yeah. style paper. Um, we spent we spent a good two days just, just thrashing that out, planning out the whole thing, all, all the ra relationships. And yeah, all the events, how they were intertwined. Exactly. You know, who'd done what to who, 
who was going to do what to who, how it was yeah, all going to piece before together. Before we even before we started. Yeah, before Just putting we any words of, script, of, of the script down. Yeah, we, we had it all mapped out. Yeah, we very much knew specifically what the characters were going to do, where they were going to end up, what kind um, of types of people they were, yes. where they worked as yeah. well. Um, uh, and I think I think it's probably safe to say that each of them has probably kind of got a little bit of us in them somewhere. You know, you've got sort of Ben, who's the slightly geekier character, mm. and you know we we're both unashamed geeks, uh, so I think we we're always going to have a slightly geekier character in there. Um, CJ is the kind of cool guy that we wish we were. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and and we really never ever were. Um, were oh god, there's my uh, my grinning mug. Uh, yeah, that's me and this Dave. Um, you know, Charlie was kind of the the parts of us that had started to settle down and maybe, you know, maybe not kind of focus on the creative life quite as much as we as we should do. Uh, and Will was the kind of bit of us that still wanted the creative life and still wants to kind of push that and focus on that. So they've all got kind of little bits of us sort of mixed in there. Um, yes. But, you know, none of them is specifically us or none of them is, you know, they're all kind of their own creations. And then obviously once once each of the actors started playing with them, they made their own they made their own thing out of the character. Um, Completely, yeah. Because we, we also did, uh, after the casting, where we saw about, th well, we started off with a list of about 300 people. Yeah, we after we, the casting call, we had to, we had a surprising. We were, we were actually quite surprised by the number of number of people we got um, keen to be in it. Um, we actually we got more than that, I think, didn't we? We got about 450 odd mm. expressions CVs, of interest. Yeah, uh, and photos. Um, oh look, there's you. Yeah, there's you. That's that's the guns from our eight ball days, probably. This. Um, I think this sequence is a nod to stuff we've done in the past. We were always kind of keen on the action type films. <laughs> and then, you know, we undercut it there with a nice little fart noise and a bit of spit. Um, so that's it. We've moved on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's kind of drawn a line a little bit under those days. Yes. Um, Cause this, this is my old flat that was yeah so, so famously featured in April. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, that's, uh, sick there that, Andrew, who's playing Ben, spews out is a kind of combination of <laughs> ham and pea and and mushroom soup, soup. and he, he absolutely hates mushrooms. <laughs> um, we didn't and do this bananas. deliberately. We honestly didn't do this deliberately. We just happened um, to mix up those two bits of soup without thinking. So he really didn't have any trouble throwing that up and looking like he was genuinely feeling sick because, yeah, he, he hates mushrooms. Um, is it worth talking a little bit about each of our each of our cast? We've kind of not really mentioned them much so far. Yeah, we, we are started talking them. about the casting. Um, yeah. So we've got uh, Haley there, who you can see now, who's playing Charlie, um, and is uh, as we as we record this off on her way to LA to try and make it big out there. Um, Hopefully, get a better agent than, <laughs> than, than this guy and. Um, well, I guess while we're talking about Bob, this is uh, Mark English of um, MEV Productions, yep. uh, who also runs the Sutton Film Festival, where we uh, we showed the eight ball trailer. Yeah, it's back. Yeah, um, where we made contact with Hannah as well. Yes, got Hannah on board. Uh, for Hannah's our uh, production, production design. designer, sort yeah. of props and uh, set design uh, and costume design. Mm -hmm. uh, the one woman Wonder Wiggins, as we call her. <laughs> Um, yes, and uh, I think H Haley was quite a clear choice, wasn't she, from when we did the casting? She definitely stood um, out she, from, from day one. She definitely stood yeah. out right from the start. I mean, um, so we did we did a full day of of casting. We must have seen about fifteen people. There was, there was our, our mate, all. our mate Tony there, the ball guy in the front, and uh, my mum and dad in the background. Um, that's filmed in their back garden. Uh, I had to say my mum and dad in the background because they'll definitely listen to this commentary and they'd be annoyed if they yeah, didn't get a mention at that point. <laughs> probably thank them for <laughs> helping us put up that marquee. That yes, that yes. Um, yeah, and basically letting us take over for a, for a week because <laughs> they put it up for my 30th birthday and left it there so that we could film. <laughs> um, 
Yes, yeah, so Hayley was it? Sorry, I interrupted you in talking about sort of Hayley. Uh, I got distracted by people on screen. Uh, I think it's going to happen a lot during the commentary, isn't it? Something on screen will crop up yep. and you'll suddenly Something go, weird. oh, um, yes, must talk about that. Um, no, she just seemed a natural choice. Mm. Yeah, she seemed to Definitely. pretty much convey what we were looking for um, with Charlie. Um, I, I think, to be honest, the, the people we've got here, sort of Jason, who's playing Will there, who's just passed out with his narcolepsy. Um, you know, again, he was a fairly... From his from his audition, he came across very strongly um, over the other guys we saw for Will. Um, I, I think it was very tough because we saw people we liked, but they weren't suited to Will necessarily. Um, one of the guys that auditioned for Will was uh, Damien Mortar, who you saw slightly earlier in the flashback as Fibber Gibbons. Um, and we, we liked him so much that we cast him as, as Fibber. It was a small role, obviously, um, and he'd been going for the main role, but he very graciously um, accepted that one instead. Yep. Um, and I think that was the thing with the casting. We saw lots of people we liked, but they just weren't necessarily right for the That's right. characters. We saw a lot. We saw a lot of good people. I think. Um, um, Henrietta was someone that we got through. Henrietta, who's playing Jennifer there. Yeah. Um, she came through the website, didn't she? Rather than yeah, rather yeah. than the casting. So she call. was actually on file mm. already, uh, but still impressed at the audition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, and she's now also out in LA trying to make it big out there. So it seems Best to be a, yeah. a common theme amongst our actors. <laughs> yep, <laughs> they'll go on to Bigger and better big. things. <laughs> and better. <laughs> um, Nick, who's there on the left-hand side, who's playing TJ, um, he pretty much was the character. He, he, uh, he turned up late for the audition uh, because he'd been out drinking all night and spent most of the night getting lost on night buses. That's right. Um, and, and had like a, a CD player strapped to his body. Which yeah. was really cool. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, he pretty much just seemed to be TJ. Um, there wasn't really a lot of a lot of doubt on that one. <laughs> you know? no. um, and I think he liked it because basically he had to play someone who got drunk a lot and <laughs> played music, which which Nick does. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, so he thought it was great. Um, and then we've got Andrew, Andre, Cleaver yeah. there, yeah. Uh, the leopard, as he likes to be known, uh, playing Ben. Um, again, he was another, yeah. another, another clear choice from the from the audition. He just yeah. kind of um, nailed the sort of slightly nervy, slightly yeah. geeky character. And, and didn't go over the top. He just no, it wasn't sort of anything too, too overboard. Um, and um, he's kind of concentrating mostly on theatre work at the moment, Andrew. Yeah. He's doing, uh, moving more into directing side of things, I think, as well, um, as well as the acting. Um, Excellent. And it, we're back in the uni flashbacks now. Um, and you might notice there's a kind of little bit of a 8 millimeter style filtering yeah. going on there. Yeah, it took ages to find that stop. <laughs> um, yeah, no, we did that afterwards. We cheated. We cheated. Don't listen to him. He's full of lies. <laughs> um, we we wanted to do this to try and differentiate the uh, the older scenes from the newer stuff. So you've got just a little visual visual cue as to when you're going back to university, as opposed to um, as opposed to the kind of Bulgarian style scenes. Yeah rather than on-screen captions which yeah really get annoying i think so we, you're not americans so. <laughs> <laughs> unless you are american uh, in which case welcome <laughs> um, don't alienate the audience rich <laughs> Damn. cut that bit out <laughs> yeah. uh we love america good to have you here um oh god you've got to learn these things rich come on come on um, Again, scenes here. All of this, all of this exterior stuff, shot locations. out in location yeah. in Bulgaria. Um, we went in April time. Easter, yeah. It was Easter. So we combined um, the Easter holiday with some time off. Yes, yeah. It was actually Easter weekend, wasn't yeah. it? We were out there for yeah. Um, nine nine days, and we were in Bulgaria in April. And on the first day, we all got sunburnt because we really weren't expecting it to be that hot in Bulgaria. 
Yeah, um, not at all, no. And I, I was wearing a scarf. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The only hat I had was a woolly hat, which I then had to wear for the next four days because I burnt my head so badly it was peeling. Um, which you know, a bald man with a peeling head is yeah. never a pretty yeah, sight. It's actually probably worth mentioning that it's it's quite a miracle that Nick actually made it to Bulgaria. Yes, and that's not me. That's actor Nick. TJ Nick. Um, actually, was, I, uh, I'm going to come back to this. I've got to mention this. I've got to mention this bit. Uh, that's that's my brother there, uh, Andy, playing uh, Bobby the fridge pisser. Um, Did this really happen? It's no. It's a. It's a. Well, it's a combination of a couple of different events. So I've kind of based this on a couple of things that did happen. Uh, it's a friend of mine at university at one of his house parties. I'll call him uh, Simon because that's his name. <laughs> I'll probably get in trouble for that one. Uh, he was so uh, blind drunk that he got up in the middle of the night and tried to piss in the salad tray of his own fridge. Uh, when questioned as to what he was doing, all he would say was, piss, piss on the fridge. And that was about it. But they managed to stop him before he actually pissed in the tray. Right. So we've um, just embellished it. Well, the other event is one that happened to my brother. So uh, this was kind of a little bit of catharsis for him because um, he was living with a friend of his who, uh, who I'll call Tim because that's also his name. Um, and uh, I think in this case, the guilty should be named. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tim came home drunk one night and tried to piss on the kitchen floor and my brother stood underneath him with a plastic bag catching it to stop it from going over <laughs> the kitchen. <laughs> so I think uh, for my brother playing Bobby the Fridge Pisser was a nice moment of uh, catharsis. Um, I'd hasten to add that wasn't actual piss that we were using in that. No. We, uh, we used mock piss. Uh, which was made out of tea, oh, was it cold tea and a bit of whiskey? Maybe not the whiskey. Maybe I, maybe we just drank the whiskey. Um, <laughs> except me, I don't drink whiskey because I get violent. Um, it was made out of cold tea, and we used a, like um, a bladder, wasn't it? No, it was yeah, like yeah. a it was like an HP sauce uh, squeezy oh, yeah. squeezy ketchupy bottle thing that um, he basically put in his trousers and squeezed the fake piss out of. Um, I say HP sauce. Uh, other brown sauces are available. Uh, don't want to do any advertising. <laughs> We're not getting paid for it. <laughs> um, yeah, so that was that was why we had the um, fridge pissing scene. Um, I think there are a couple of moments like that in the film that I that I based on university events. They weren't, you know, strictly word for word what happened. Mm. Uh, or, you know, there are a couple of bits I based on conversations that friends had had, but, you know, any writer does that. Always steal your friends' conversations. Never talk around a writer. They'll pinch it. Um, anyway, let's go back to what you're saying about Nick. Yeah, Nick, um, it's a miracle that he made it to Bulgaria. Yes. Because about a week before we were due to go, mm. he realised that with his Nigerian passport and... Uh, um, nationality he would need a visa to get into to actually fly into Bulgaria yep. and he didn't have one at that time no nope. so it was up to muggins and you <laughs> and, and me and, and other muggins to go up to the Bulgarian embassy which is a lovely place in, in London and beg literally beg for them to push it, push it through. And uh, I think we were there, was it the day before we were due to fly? Or the, yeah, or absolutely, the day, it was the, the it day was, before. It was the day before, the day before it was we were due to fly out. As anything. We, and we did not expect to, to actually get it. I, I think we stayed there for about four or five hours. Yeah. Just just waiting for someone to come out. And we had no reason. idea whether they were gonna come through with it or no. not. They, they were not sane. No, they, they didn't seem overly impressed with us. Um, we did have to write a rather sizable check as well. Yes. That might have swung it. Yes, I, I think giving them a lot of money uh, helped them, not necessarily us. No, no that wasn't in the budget. <laughs> yeah, 
it's all these little costs <laughs> that push up. Uh, little. <laughs> I say little. It's all these costs that push up a, a pretty much non-existent budget into a more reasonably existent budget. That's probably my favourite shot in the film. This one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, to be honest, a lot of the shots around here. Yeah. Um, I love. I mean, they're a little bit wobbly because we were using a, a steady cam for this. Yeah. Which uh, you can see Walking there. backwards. It, yeah. It, with some very heavy equipment it's still a lot steadier than if we were just handheld yeah. but it's still a little bit juddery yeah. um, so hopefully this scene doesn't make you too seasick um, but there are some uh, I think my other my other favourite shot is when uh, Jay and Haley are sat overlooking this monument a little bit later on and that also looks uh, rather beautiful yeah that's a good one too yeah I mean, that, that scenery is completely breathtaking when, you, yeah. when you're actually there with all those buildings yeah, in absolutely. the background. Yeah, uh, Veliko Tanova is, is definitely a beautiful place. Um, it's the tourist place to go to in Bulgaria. Yep, a little bit of advertising there for yeah. for the Bulgarian <laughs> tourist board. But we mean it. No, we generally it's a really do. Nice it's place. Yeah. We both said if we weren't working here, we would definitely enjoy a holiday. <laughs> yeah, no, it would be, I'd actually would quite like to go yeah. there for a holiday having... Um, not really paid attention to a lot of it no because we were we were working all hours so pretty solid could i mean only really wind down in the in the when we're having a meal in the evening yeah i mean you and i were doing pretty much 20 hour days mm. while we were out there i mean we were getting by on four hours of sleep yeah. and pro plus and anything with caffeine in it basically um because we we'd get up in the morning go over all the shot lists for the day Yep. Change locations if need be. Um, yeah. Go in recce locations while maybe one of us was doing some shooting, because um, obviously you know another another drawback of the low budget shoot is we weren't able to get out to Bulgaria beforehand and look at any of the locations. We looked no. at photos. A Andy know, had been before. Andy had given us and, some and tips. Had photos. Um, and we, so. you know, obviously we took his advice for um, a lot of locations. Yeah. But, but we didn't have transport either, really. No. We were on foot, and the, the hostel we were staying in, great as, as though it was, it was away up that hill. But um, Which, they, they very generously ferried us, ferried us around a few times, I have to say. Yeah, um, yeah. The absolutely. guys at the hostel did, were amazing. They did move all our equipment up there. Yeah, they, um, they really went out. To be honest, everyone in Veliko Tenovo was great. They really, very they really went to yeah, town for us. The, the kind of tourist board, put in a lot of effort uh, I mean to the extent where they were willing to get the police to close down roads for us to film that's, that's right, how yeah. that's, that's how right. accommodating they were um, yeah the, I, the police I, would stop and, and shake their hands and say oh yeah we've heard you're making a film that's really great well I think the most surreal moment with the police was these these shots here with Nick we the, shot these at about f this is about four or five o'clock in the morning we had to do it at this time because because yeah, of the streets and the and the we needed that that dawn yeah because obviously the way the shots are yeah. this is happening first thing in the it morning had to be authentic. it had to look like it was early and to be honest we needed the clear streets with no traffic no yeah. people um so you know we, we we'd covered nick in fake blood got up at ridiculous o'clock in the morning trekked down to um Salavet's castle um and we were just finishing off our last shots with Nick uh, and a police car was sort of, a police car was pootling over towards us. And you know, being old school guerrilla filmmakers, our first instinct was quick, let's get this finished before the police move us on. Um, and we were just finishing off and one of the policemen came over and yeah, shook our hands, asked us how it's going. And then started having a sort of conversation with Nick about the history of the castle, the Ottoman empire, um, while he was covered in blood yeah while <laughs> Nick stood there covered and in fake that, blood and a torn shirt those fake and, injuries uh, yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah that was the one moment where I thought right I'm stood outside a Bulgarian castle at 5 o'clock in the morning watching a policeman have a conversation with a man covered in fake blood about the Ottoman Empire it doesn't really get a lot stranger than that it's quite surreal yeah um, especially when you're sleep deprived uh, it, it kind of yeah takes on a, a kind of weird sheen um we actually had quite a big crowd watching us film this scene as well. Yes, this was kind of early evening time, wasn't yeah. it, when we did this? Um, 
Uh, and this is actually the road leading up towards our hostel, yeah. um, which is a reasonable yeah. incline. Um, and walking backwards with a camera and a steady cam <laughs> down a steep cobbled street is not the easiest of things, I have to say. Um, yes, uh, all of these scenes here with uh, Andrew in his office. Uh, this is the office I used to work in at the BBC, in the Information Archives. That's the uh, desk of Sarah Hayes, who's the head of Information you Archives. Never know. <laughs> yeah. um, so yes, so that's a that's a BBC location right there. Uh, I say BBC location. It's a BBC office. It's a working office. It's not a location. <laughs> but we sh we shot this on a Saturday morning, um, not long after I'd uh, finished working there. Because part of the reason we were able to make this film was um, I got a chunk of redundancy money um, and you got a chunk of money from selling your house. Yeah. So it was kind of um, the ideal coming together of a couple of different elements that, that meant we had the money and I had the time to devote to making this. I mean, you had to kind of... You had the hardest time when we were making this. Yeah, well, it was an advantage to be moving from that flat into a house during the shoot. It was because it gave us a couple of extra locations. Two, two locations <laughs> for the price of one, really. But during the shoot, you were moving house. Moving house. You were still working because you took time off from work to do the shoot. I, yep. was, I was unemployed, so I actually had the luxury of time to spend on this. Yeah. And also, your lovely wife, Heather, was pregnant with your first child, Claudia, yep. at the time. So yeah. you really That's weren't right. doing things by halves that year, were no. you? No, it was a busy year. <laughs> Um, you're a lot greyer now it was than a race you were back then. Against time, <laughs> <laughs> which we lost. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, this was a really useful location as well. This is the offices of a design company called Small Japanese Soldier, where uh, my friend Liz works. Um, and I'd say Liz is probably actually the first lady of Trick Shop, being that she's yep. been yeah, there through most of our hero. yeah. <laughs> she's been there through most of our filming, uh, and she turns up in the background a lot in a few scenes. Uh, I think you can see her in the Kinky Malinky scene, yeah, and in one of Charlie's office scenes later on. She's, oh yeah, she's lurking around in the background because obviously Charlie's office is also these small Japanese soldier offices. Uh, as we shot all that in the in the one day, uh, we did yep. quite a bit there. This was one of those unfortunate moments early on as well, where we did all this shooting with, you know, Mark and Nick and and Haley and the other Mark, Mark Beersmore, on this first day, and we got back and we looked at the rushes for this scene, and we had about three takes with no sound where we hadn't switched the microphone on. Even after all these years, we're still, still making those elementary mistakes yeah. every now and then. <laughs> but you know, I think even the best of them still do that. Yeah. I bet, you know, when Orson Welles was making Citizen Kane, there were a couple of ones where he forgot to switch the mic on. I bet. I bet there were. And lens cap. I bet he had the lens cap on oh, for at yeah. least two shots. There's Pepe's Bar. Yep, good old Pepe's yep. Bar. Um, location and site of Menion unwinding. Um, so what I mean, all these interiors were... Just, just for economies, we were, were filmed out in Bulgaria as well, while yep. we had everyone in one place and we could... You got distracted by the I'll footage of the water fire party, didn't you? <laughs> um, I have to say, in our defence, um, nope, this bit's utterly shameless, it's gratuitous. I mean, alright, at least it's a joke, you've got this bit in the middle, come on. Yeah. No, it's, no it's, it's completely gratuitous. Um, the third girl there, Eva, we found literally was it on the day that we were shooting these water fight scenes? Did we find yeah. her on the day or was it the yeah. day before? Well, maybe the day before. Um, I think Hannah managed to sort of before. put out a call and, and mm. track someone down because someone it was right at the end of the shoot and we just got to, to the point right. where we hadn't, yeah, we just hadn't had time to sort out yeah. anything. Um, but yeah, no, the Bulgarian interiors, um, the restaurant scenes earlier and those bar scenes, they're all... They were all filmed on location in Bulgaria. Um, Just, uh, yeah, like you said, the main reason being we had the four actors there yeah. for those nine days. Um, and it made sense to just try and do as much as we could. In, in big blocks. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
so we shot this sort of all the restaurant scenes over a two day period uh, and we shot all the scenes you see with the f with the four of them in the bar that come up from now through to through towards the end we shot all of that in one day um, and that yeah, was that was that quite, was a, quite day. a day that was yeah. a tough day um, that was a, a fair old chunk we were in there for about 11 10 11 hours I think maybe slightly longer yeah, yeah we booked it out the whole day didn't we god there's my fat eggy face again as um endless dave um, probably a quick shout out to daniela from stara planina vt properties for helping us source those locations yes yeah nope she did a lot of work for Serving us with job. locations yeah um, and we're, we're kind of back around this sort of central monument in veliko tonova now Okay, it just looks amazing. But for for these shots, we did we did quite a lot here. Um, Remember that woman? That yes, was in the background? that's what I was, just what I was going to say. There's a there's a kind of woman in a red coat. You might see her in one or two of the shots, and we did about three we did about three takes on the two of them, and she would not budge. She'd managed to position herself at a point where throughout the entire shot of them walking, she was in she was in the camera. Amazing. Yeah, and looking at us. Yeah. Without even trying, she was just there in shot the whole time. Uh, I think I've cut around her, but I think there's, out, yeah. there's possibly one or two shots where she might crop up in the background. But she was there, yeah, we, we were watching the footage back and it was like, that Is woman that with the red coat, again? she's been there the entire time. Um, but yeah, I think we were, we were keen to film as much outside as we could, um, purely because it just makes it with locations like that, it just yeah. makes it look so much better. So yeah. much more interesting than a standard kind of talking head shot. Yeah. Well, we were lucky with the weather, weren't we? Because yes. it was absolutely... Well, we were quite despondent on that day yeah, that turned up. Yeah, torrential rain on the first day. Yeah, on the day we arrived, it was an absolute downpour. And like, because everything is, you know, these kind of high... These sort of, you know, high angled streets. Yeah. There was just rivers of water running down everywhere. and. We just thought that's it. We've got four days worth of exterior shooting planned, and it's going to rain. We're not going to be able to do any of it. Um, and then this was like the, the next day, bright sunshine, everything bone dry. We got burnt. <laughs> so we were we were really lucky, and it held out for the rest of the nine days we were there. Um, so yeah, we we really hit a lucky streak with the weather. Um, because otherwise that really would have scuppered us. Um, yeah, and as you can see there, we really couldn't afford to do the stunt in the end. Um, we did have it kind of lined up, didn't we? We had someone lined up to do us a proper, throwing someone proper through stunt. a sheet, sheet of yeah. glass stunt. Um, and in the end, just time and money, as always, as always on something like this, became the yeah. factor. We just, we couldn't afford to do it. We didn't have time to do it. Um, so a few stock shots. Oh, yep. So he really—it's genuine. Yeah, yeah it he does look really realistic. That's what we we're going for there. He really felt sick at that point. Yeah, you know, he really didn't didn't enjoy that at all. Hmm. Um, this was just a kind of little nook, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, not far away from where are from the main sort of street, and there's there's all these kind of little tucked away bits. Street just arts look, or yeah, sculptures and yeah. statues and things. Yeah, statues. Really interesting place. Yeah. yeah, I think if you in that in that sort of yeah. first montage in Bulgaria, I, p I put in a fair few shots of statues because everywhere you looked, there's these kind of massive wrought iron communisty statues, and you know, um, not that we knew who any of them were because we can't read Bulgarian, <laughs> um, but there are certainly a lot yeah. of. Them. Uh, yeah, language barrier was a bit of a bit of an issue on on, a, on occasion. Yes, being your kind of standard ignorant English types, um, we don't speak Bulgarian. No. Um, however, in um, and sorry, Rich, Rich distracted me slightly. There, he was being attacked by a fly. Um, yeah, in, <laughs> it's a little bit of uh, visual action there, so you can work out what's going on while we record this. Um, I've lost my train of thought now. You were attacked by that fly. It distracted me. What was I talking about? I just remember being in that taxi when when we were trying to get to the station and we didn't know the word for the station. 
<laughs> so we're, you know, we're yes. all, it was like a game of charades. Yeah, um, miming trains and making chuff chuff noises, I think, was That's the true. kind of way we managed we to progressed. get it across. So, three year um, I think, yeah, the problem with it being Bulgaria is, it, it, I think even things like Russian, they don't speak a lot of that. I think even That's if right. you spoke Russian, you wouldn't necessarily get by. They said possibly a little bit of German, yeah. but we tried that and that didn't, seem, didn't, to, work. <laughs> didn't seem to work. Um, and the French, see, French isn't an, an mm. option there either. So the kind of stuff you might this, fall back on with European countries. They, they went into the EU. Yes. So. Um, and that's another reason that we didn't filmed have Euro at the time either. No. So. That's another reason we filmed out there because it was dirt cheap. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Dirt cheap. Absolutely. A, a three course meal with drinks for nine people. Nine people. On average, was costing us about thirty-five pounds. Yeah. Um, with a lot of drink. I love Andrew's makeup that faded the Robbie Williams Let Me Entertain You style. Um, yeah, just why is he why is he made up like that? He just looks like he's in a different band. <laughs> it's brilliant. They all I love that. Um, Nick was wearing a Plan A t-shirt there, who are one of the many bands featured on the soundtrack. The soundtrack my mate yeah. Jeff's band. Uh, the other bands being Honeycube, who are a fantastic band. It's possible my brother might be the bass player in that one. Entirely possible. But, you know, they're still, they're still good. Um, Motel Hero, now defunct. Uh, and Sactric, um, who are another friend's band. And, uh, yeah, so there's kind of all the music you hear in the background at parties or over any of the montages. Um, are those four bands. Um, yeah, that band sequence just then, we spent about a day filming that, didn't we? We, we took a lot of footage for that, that kind of cutaway yeah. scene yeah. there. Um, and we, Lots of different angles and dolly shots and things. And, and they spent about two, three hours being made up for it as well for that one. That was probably yeah, one of the longest. Yeah, that was an entire day shooting that, wasn't yeah. it? Just a little cutaway. Yeah, I think the, the weirdest thing was all the little kind of cutaway scenes. Took are the longer ones than that, the big dialogue scenes. <laughs> yeah, they took a long Which, time to set up. Um, took a lot of time to get used to actually. The kind of the the fancy dress montage. We'd never had a, a proper later. makeup artist on on set. Oh. No, so this was like the first so, time so we were doing things properly. Learning to be patient to wait for makeup was a new experience. Yeah, um, yeah, that took a bit getting used to. Um, I'd say slightly more so for you than for me. I remember you getting yeah. a little bit more impatient, partly because. Um, you know, for you, you had the sort of you had a heavily pregnant wife waiting at home as well, and you didn't want things to be delayed past our kind of agreed shooting times. Mm. Obviously, you know, um, you didn't want to be hanging around, hanging around late. It was enough of a strain on her as it was, you know, with the amount of filming we were doing, yeah. without adding to adding to the length of the time you were away. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think that that was definitely towards the end as well when we were getting these. Well, the last days. day was was her birthday. <laughs> Yes, so I did have to get away from that one. <laughs> yes, I'm, uh, I'm. I'm always impressed that you know I, I that year didn't end the, in uh, divorce. <laughs> you know? I missed the wet t-shirt for that. I, I think, to be honest, you had to miss the wet t-shirt scene. I think. Of I think all the that year. I had to miss. Yeah, I, it was that one. I think that year would have ended in divorce if you had been around for the wet t-shirt scene on your wife's birthday. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think I think there's limits. Uh, it's all right, Rich. I covered it. <laughs> I left it in your cable yeah. hand. Let's uh, let's draw a veil over that kind of image. <laughs> um, this scene here took a long time to shoot, mainly because uh, the laughter's pretty genuine, uh, and was yeah. also going on off camera, behind the camera as well as on camera. Uh, it was a chance for and even Jay there, and Nick to yeah. up a little bit. They, they've got completely different hairstyles, completely different makeup styles. Yes, clothes. To so the to the, the setup scenes. time, you're looking at two or three hours there. Yeah. Ah, now this is uh, this is a moment that we mentioned earlier. Coming up any second now is the oh. moment where Jay cracks his rib. We were shooting this at the end of the day. This is day one. On the. And it's there, that shout there. That was Jay <laughs> cracking his rib. You've got um, to leave all the injuries in. Well, you know, he suffered for it. We've got to yeah. put that shot in there. And, you know, you can see him holding his side now in this shot. Mm. Um, the, 
problem being we hadn't fully choreographed it had we at the end of the day we were running no. out of time we had to be out Short of the location um, which was very kindly loaned to us from uh, someone I knew at work yes Julian. Uh, by Julian so, who's you. also in the um, in the party scene isn't he in the um, yeah. garden party garden scenes party, yeah. yeah yeah film party um, and and obviously you know we, we couldn't stay in his house all night um, so yeah. we had to be out there by a reasonable time so we were running short we kind of we kind of rushed through that through those scenes a little bit um, and if we'd taken maybe a little bit more time Jay wouldn't have greatest me <laughs> yeah um, this is what you were talking about earlier these scenes as well took a long time to yeah. get everyone made up and dressed yeah. up for I mean Haley's hair took about an hour and a half or possibly longer just to put all the extensions in um, yeah but you know it's worth it for this little montage bit again this is kind of based on something that happened to me we had a <laughs> it's the Robin outfit yeah um, he was going to be a Star Trek guy wasn't he he was he was going to be in a Star Trek costume uh, in the original script but um, Hannah suggested that she make him a, a Robin costume and when she came along to the rehearsal day with the with the kind of test stuff for him to try on um, we knew that the Robin costume was the way to go um, yeah from the hysterics that that ensued when he tried on the pants um, yeah we knew we were onto a winner there um, we always go quiet at that point are you sensing there's a kind of theme there um, we're Why not I don't, I don't know, I don't know. Um, but yeah inspired by real events the um, the kind of costumes there I had a second year university ball that we just couldn't afford to get tuxes for so we literally I went in a kind of a cheesy check jacket and red shirt and glitzy waistcoat and bow tie in a kind of game show host way. And, uh, and uh, Liz, who we mentioned earlier, she went with a kind of sort of tutu type effect. So um, yeah, that's kind of mm. kind of inspired. Nobody went in a Robin outfit, I have to say, uh, that I saw. Uh, there, there could have been, but um, I didn't bump into them. Yeah, no. Originally, he was going to be in a Star Trek outfit, and I think, yeah, I think the Robin was like, an original series Star Trek. Yeah, yellow jersey or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kirk style. Yeah, yeah Podgy. Yeah. <laughs> Kirk. <laughs> oh, Kirk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We hasten to add, we're not calling Andrew Podgy. Um, and uh, fact fans, there for those of you who like a fact, I know people like a fact. There's uh, that's my birthday, and uh, <laughs> that's your birthday. <laughs> <laughs> just a little random fact there um, and uh, TJ's name is in fact Timothy James which is mine and my brother's middle names yeah so there you go it's uh, another little uh, it's completely useless fact TJ Hooker no no uh, or I can't think of any other TJ's that's it it's just TJ Hooker isn't it really yeah um, and yeah, in fact, Jennifer does call him Timothy at one point at the end. So that's right. We yeah. do use his do use his full name. Um, I think I've managed to edit around a potential mistake as well that we had in here. Oh yeah. In that um, Charlie was referred to in one of the university scenes as Charlie Vale. Yeah. And referred to in one of the later scenes as Charlie Vale. And yet she's a married woman. She's now married. it's possible that she didn't take her husband's name. Yeah, that's always possible. But it would just look a little bit like we hadn't paid due care and attention. Could be a continuity. These yeah. are my favourite yeah, shots these, that these we were saying good. earlier. Yeah. Um, I like these. Good uh, depth of field. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. It's nice. Well done, us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's pat our backs. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> I the like camera it was lot. across the street to get that. So we did have to break filming a couple of times. As a, yeah, to, to let cars, cars go past. Yeah. Or a random swearing old lady. Barky dog. Barky dog. There was a lot of barking dogs in Bulgaria. Lots of works going on as well. Yes. Yeah. Building, construction. Everywhere we went, construction noise. Yeah. <laughs> Drilling, hamming, 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 bang. Ha I can't even speak anymore. Hammering, drilling. You can tell I'm not into DIY, can't you? I'm not a DIY man. That thing you do with the hammer thing. Yeah, and the, with the drill. Yeah, a lot of construction, a lot of dogs, a lot of dogs. Yeah. Oh, there is, there's my mum and dad in the background on the left yeah. there, and uh, their friend Linda on the right yeah. talking to them. 
Um, and this was good fun to shoot. As our mate Tony. As our mate Tone. It's, again, not a stretch for him. Yeah. He loved this. He absolutely <laughs> loved it. Being chatted up by a lovely lady. It was right up his street. Um, yeah. What did we use for champagne? Um, um, it was like apple juice and fizzy apple, water, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, apple juice and sparkling And water. on the left there, that's Julian, whose house we used. That's right. Being vomited yeah. on. Yeah. Uh, he had the honour of being... Charlie's Mr. husband. Mr. Vale, yeah. yeah. Um, yes, and uh, the um, Alan Sugar style, you're fired voice earlier was in fact me. Yes. Um, oh, that's that's one of our only really like referency type moments, isn't it? We, yeah. We cut that right out. There's only one other reference, and that is the name of. Uh, Ben's secretary, secretary yeah. is Miss Teshmaka, yeah. which was uh, Lex Luthor's secretary in Superman the movie. Yeah, you just. So there you go. Another little. Uh, I told you we were geeks. <laughs> I did say that. We, we were very, very restrained on this. We because we had a we couple of others, back. I think, didn't we? Yeah, we had we a couple did. of others in the there original draft. There was a couple draft, of others in the script um, that we cut, and then we actually thought it just didn't fit. No, it's not that sort of film. You know, we'd gone overboard in the other two films. So yeah, and I, I think. Um, you know, we were conscious that was a little bit too Kevin Smith-like. You yeah. know, we're both big Kevin Smith fans of his earlier stuff anyway. Um, yeah. And I think we felt it was getting a bit too much into that territory, you know, with, like, referencing Star Wars and that kind of thing. Um, we also had a, the original flashback for Fibber Gibbons was, um, you know, what the whatever happened to him. We've now got that kind of shot of him being campaigning for mayor of pool yeah um the original flashback was him kind of dying in a butch and sundance style shootout because he really did work for the cia that's right um yeah. but we just thought that was too uh, too much of a fantasy sequence yeah. and no it, that didn't fit there, the tone of there the weren't film. there weren't yeah. any other little fantasy sequences like that yeah so we um we kind of ditched that uh, quite but, early on I yeah think. Quite early on in the scripting yeah. process, but in terms of changes, that that is pretty much, pretty much it. Really, we didn't we change didn't a lot. Do any major actually. rewrites or, um, or cut any major scenes? We we cut. We had about three additional university scenes, with um, Will and TJ having a few conversations, uh, and also one where Will and Charlie have an argument, um, mm. have a bit of a screaming match. Um, and we ditched those quite early on as well because they just didn't really add anything. They didn't move the story forward. Yep. They didn't add any details about the characters that you didn't get from any of the yeah, other. They were scenes. little sketches, weren't they? So yeah, we we could have if we'd had time, we could have filmed them for. We contemplated about doing that so that they were kind of little DVD yeah, extras. extras or something. But yeah. again, you know, they time were. time was our enemy, so um, we had to we didn't get around to doing it. Product. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The film. Um, so we don't really have anything in the way of deleted scenes because Not much, pretty no. much everything we shot yeah. is there. There's a Plenty lot of, of scenes where alternative takes mm. you know, where things might have been played slightly differently. There's a lot of scenes where we I've, I've, like this scene, for example, with, with we, we there's some different delivery. Times, yeah, yeah, there's some different delivery on some of the lines yeah. to give it a slightly different emphasis because um, we did about seven or eight. We we just did it in continuous takes and we yeah. did about seven or eight takes of it, which was which was quite draining for Jay and for Haley, but also quite good for them because it meant they they could just play it all the way through each time and yeah. they didn't have yeah. to stop, start, stop, start for the camera to be yeah. sort of reset. Um, so it gave them a bit of flow. But, I mean, this is a long scene. You're talking about sort of eight minutes of the film. Yeah. It's, it's a tenth of the film in this mm. one scene. Um, it was like an was entire tape, an yeah. entire mini DV tape. Yeah, of just, just this scene. scene. Um, and uh, it, it took a lot out of them to keep doing yeah. this one, yeah. Because uh, it's kind of it's quite a key scene, um, and yeah, it's quite it's quite hard work for them. Um, yeah, again, all still shot in the one bar on that one day mm. that we did all of these scenes. So this was this was the kind of biggest chunk of that day um, where we did all these other bar scenes. This kind of took the the most time in the middle. Uh,
I did plenty of rehearsals on this as well. That's why the, they're so good with the lines. Yeah, I mean, they spent a lot of time yeah. going over it while we were out there. I mean, as much not, time not as they once could. did we need any cue cards or anything. No, we managed to get through that. this one. This is... This one, they were kind of straight through on it. Yeah. yeah. This really demonstrates how good they are. Mm. Yeah, no, this is a kind of signature scene for the two of them. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, they both delivered some cracking, yeah, cracking I mean, stuff. I mean, they're, I mean, they're all great. There was, there was more demands on Jay and Haley because yeah. they've got the kind longer, of longer scenes. Yeah, yeah, and there's, there's the, there's the kind of more emotional, more emotional yeah, stuff yeah. to convey between the two of them, especially um, to come. Yeah. Although, although, sort of the last scene. The last, the cafe scenes with Nick as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Between the three of them, they've got quite a lot to, um, quite a lot to convey. Yeah. Do you think anyone listens to commentaries? Well, I'd like to say hello to my future self. Because I'll really? probably listen to this in about 20 years. Oh, OK. I'd like to say hello to Rich's future self as well. Hello. Uh, that's just in case you've, you know, ditched me by the wayside by that oh, point. Oh, right. Um, uh, and if you have, you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd like to say hello to uh, Mum, because she'll definitely be watching it. OK. Yeah, she'll, she'll yeah. watch every bit of the DVD, basically, won't yeah. she? Yeah. Um, that's probably it. It's probably you and my mum. <laughs> That are, that are actually listening to this. So, um, all right, mum. Hello. I was waving as well there. Do you know? Yeah. Do you know, I did it earlier. Yeah. yeah. I mean, why do you do that when you say hello to people Radio on something you hands. know is is audio only? You know, hello. Yeah. I'm doing it again. I'm doing it as I'm saying hello there. Um, yeah. Well, that's fascinating. That bit of commentary, isn't it? Uh, but do you do you really listen to many commentaries of actual DVDs? Yeah. That I buy? yeah. I don't these days. Well, I, mean, I tend uh, to because no, um, you've got a family instead that occupies your to. time. I used to, yeah. I when, I, when DVDs first came out, I listened to yeah e everything on the DVD. I am. Um, I never listened to. But them. then it's not such a novelty anymore. No, it's kind of. Mm. It's not even. A sp I don't think it's even a special feature anymore. Yeah. I think you kind of just expect there to be a commentary. Yeah, that's standard. It's standard. Yeah. It, you feel disappointed it's if there isn't one, CD but you're probably not going to listen to it. Standard. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, quite um, standard. If I do say so myself, I quite like the way I've cut this bit in this scene as well. Yeah. With the um, flipping back and forth between the two different takes of Jay to make it seem a bit quicker. Yeah. Um, and I like the way we've got uh, Andrew sleeping in the corner in this one. Yeah. Um, I think that's partly because in a lot of these scenes he's not he's not in it too much at this point of the film, no, so we wanted to kind of. We still need visibility. He's still there, you know. <laughs> It's, it's nicely shot. I mean, that kitchen's quite narrow as well, so we're quite, quite limited in what shots you could actually set up. Yes, so this is the same place that we shot the fridge pissing yep. and the scene earlier with um, Nick and Andrew talking to each other. We just shot That's different parts of the one kitchen. Probably why the fridge pissing scene's shot from above, just to kind of get some... Yeah, because we'd run out of space. We couldn't... Go. We're probably standing on that chair. You were standing yeah. on the chair, yeah. We couldn't... We couldn't shoot lengthways any other way no. because it's um, it was just a little bit narrow for that. So, but it was, I mean, we we it was a great kitchen in that we managed to ring three different looking locations out of it. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. At the one party. So yeah, but yeah, again, this was all towards the end of the main shoot. Um, there was a lot of l kind of little extra days we did after the main sort of two weeks of the shoot. So lots of the kind of cutaway scenes. Yeah. Um, things like the garden party, um, the um, kinky malinky band scene. Yeah. Um, some of the little okay. university cutaways where they're sat on a park bench or sat outside the pub. And That's just the way that we scheduled it. Yeah. Because we knew by that point if we could leave all those to the end. Yeah, we'd have the ma the body of the film under our belts. So yeah, we knew if we could get eighty five to ninety percent of it done. It <laughs> yeah, um, and they were they were bespoke specific scenes, so continuity, you know, with previous shots or scenes wasn't a problem. Yeah, I mean it's li it's little scenes like yeah. this. This was at um, my club. dad's old football yeah. club. 
um, which you know is, is no longer theirs. Um, I had my 18th birthday party then. Yeah. Do you remember that? I do. Yeah. You obviously weren't drunk enough then. Well, I say I remember <laughs> it. I remember the beginning. Yeah, I don't remember the end. I remember uh, arriving. Um, I know I had hair back then. That's uh, that's about all I yeah. remember. Back I in the day, I had brown hair back then. You did, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a long time ago now. <laughs> um, she, Haley, really slapped him there in every yeah. take. Jay was insistent that that she hit him. Yeah, he's a um, man. Well, he was insistent that she hit him until about the eighth take, by which point I think he changed his mind. Yeah. Um, because she didn't do it lightly. It's a real struggle to block all this out, but it works quite well. Yeah. Because yeah. we were dog tired by the end of the day. Yeah. Well, this, this was this was the last thing we did. Um, and it was needed quite a bit of coverage. Yeah. But it works yeah. pretty well. Um, so that's that's kind of the last thing we did at that location in Bulgaria. Yeah. Um, and again. A little bit in this scene as well. That's. Nick with Zoe, one of our makeup artists, mm. and he was a bit disappointed that he was the only one that didn't get a snog in this film. Because <laughs> uh, uh, had to give him, give him that. Jay and Henrietta kiss, and yeah. you know, you see later on, uh, Haley and Andrew kiss, and Nick was like, "What about me? I'm the cool one. I'm the cool musician guy. I don't get a snog. Nothing. No action for Nick. No. So that, that's the closest he got there. He got to taking out a girl out of the room. Right. That's enough. Yeah." That'll do. What more does he want? God, we weren't, we're not there to kind of please everyone, are we? But yeah, I mean, I, I really liked what sort of Faye and Hannah did with the um, university costumes and characters to just make them look yeah. that little bit different. No, it, it's um, so different. You believe it. But the, the one thing we liked as kind of almost a little joke is that uh, Nick looks exactly the same. That his hair is yeah. unchanged over the... Over the sort of ten years, <laughs> he's still got that same look. But some but dudes, they just do. Yeah, they just yeah. cruise along. The same old look. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that um, shirt I was wearing as Endless Dave earlier is something that I used to wear it's at university. Your granddad shirt. It is yeah. my university granddad shirt, um, <laughs> which has since been binned. I think <laughs> I'm not going to need to play Endless Dave again. So you know, um, unless of course we bring him back for Incidental Weekend Two. Yep. Incidental week. <laughs> Not a month. <laughs> um, yeah. In in which um, uh, endless Dave has been sent to jail for political gerrymandering. He breaks out with Ben, um, yeah. and they get involved in a madcap caper involving Will's corpse. <laughs> uh, and uh, Charlie and TJ, who are now a couple, get mixed up in it. Of course. Yeah. It's yep. the inevitable sequence. Yep. It's much like uh, Weekend at Bernie's Two. Yeah, yeah. Um, but um, it is a law of diminishing returns. <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying? I think it's, I think it's incidental Weekend Two. Come on, with corpse fun. That's actually a guarantee of quality oh, right. right there. Yeah. Weekend at Bernie's Two. Come on. <laughs> Terry Kaiser. You're a Let's get him. You're a Weekend at Bernie's fan, aren't you? I keep forgetting that. Yeah. So, little stock shot there to stock indicate shot. passage of time. Very evil dead. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, that red tequila bottle is is mine. That's a very nice tequila. That is. Mm. It's very expensive. I've got it as a present. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? It's yeah, very nice. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. <laughs> no, um, no second unit then. <laughs> no, we just about had a first unit, didn't we? Really, <laughs> let's be honest. Good. Um, the point oh, we, did, of unit, we did have yeah. a second unit, which was you and Rob going out film, filming location stuff in Bulgaria. Were we, were we filming you did a lot simultaneously of kind of with, with another shot? Yeah. Mm, no, because we only had one you camera. You were just sleeping. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I doubt I was sleeping. I didn't, don't remember doing a lot of that. <laughs> uh, yeah. I was probably rehearsing something else with the other guys. Yes, yes. Or travelling to a location or while you were shooting something there. Something. Yeah. yeah, buying a... Uh, see, the one thing about food in Bulgaria, it was all bread, meat and cheese. Where did you get it from? Bread, Number meat one. and cheese. Yes. And we only found one little corner shop that would sell us anything resembling a sandwich. Yeah. yeah. And uh, was, is, was Faye, is Faye vegetarian? Possibly. And I know there was, was someone that was... Uh, Haley's not fond of... She's not fond of white bread. bread. Um, white bread. White bread. Yeah. Um, 
And yeah, there's not a lot of variety in Bulgaria when it comes to that. In fact, uh, in fact, we went to buy... In the restaurant, it is pretty much all meat, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which for me and you was like a dream come true. Oh, yes. It, it was like we died in Place of meat, please. Yes. It was called plate of meat, wasn't it? It was. Yeah. No. Loosely, um, meat on a stick. Meat on a stick was uh, yeah. Rob's meal of choice. Meal of choice. Um, and when it it turned up, they just brought the stick out, hadn't they, initially? Um, without the meat. And that was just stick. And uh, I'd never seen anyone look quite so flawn. He really looked lost, like a, like a little lamb. Um, we had this thing at mealtimes, didn't we? Uh, every night, one person... And it was a different person every night. Got their meal thirty minutes after the rest of us. That's right. Whichever restaurant it's we went culture, to, isn't it? But it it, it right. was weird. Whichever restaurant we went to, one of us, yeah. a different person, got their meal late. Really bizarre. I, I mean, I must admit, yeah. my overriding memory of Bulgaria is is it's fun. Hysterics. Yes. You're like all I remember at meal times is laughing. I think. In yours and my case, that was mainly hysterical laughter brought on by... Lack of sleep. Yeah, and overtiredness <laughs> and caffeine. Um, yep. So, yeah. The, Pro Plus was our drug. The, um, the, the hysterics were never far away, to be fair. But you know, I, I, generally, I genuinely just remember laughing a lot when we were yeah. doing the filming. Yeah. Um, but I'm pretty sure we all enjoyed it while we were out there. Yeah, uh, definitely. Yeah. It was, you know, it was a shoot and it was tough at times but it was also quite good fun uh, yeah I definitely definitely enjoyed it but I'd probably want to sleep a little bit more next time and get other people to oh, help right. us a bit more okay. do less ourselves <laughs> you know s somebody else to hold the camera and the boom yeah it would have also been nice if your brother hadn't broken the boom on the day before we started oh, the shoot yeah he wasn't in the good books for that one, was he? No, he wasn't. No. <laughs> uh, I think it was also the fact that he broke it whilst trying to demonstrate you, demonstrate to you exactly how, how to unfolded. operate it. Yeah. Yes. How, yeah. How it extended. Yeah. Which yes. meant we had to stick it together with gaffer tape every day. Every single time. Every single time we wanted to use it, we had to put it together with gaffer tape. Yeah. And then dismantle it, and then put it back together, and dismantle it. <laughs> so. Um, Classic. So yeah, Rob, we haven't forgotten that. Because <laughs> I know you'll be listening to this. Actually, he likes a commentary. Does your brother? He does. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Rob, you owe us a boom still. <laughs> um, and this was filmed in the this was filmed in the pub by Hannah's place, wasn't it? Yeah. And this is supposed to match all the evening footage. Yeah. Unfortunately, we could only shoot there during the day. And it looks like it's during the day. There's not a lot we can yeah, do to try and quite to try and filter it down. So originally, in the way we were going to edit it, you would have had the shot of TJ saying, "Oh shit, be right back," which would have cut straight into this scene. Yeah. But it, that highlights the fact that those two scenes really don't match. So yeah. hopefully, there's been enough of a gap between them that you'll forgive this. But yeah, it's yeah, probably, okay, yeah, it's we, one of the dodgier scenes in the movie. Yeah, let's, let's we, admit it. Hold our hands up. You know, hands in the air. There's we know an it's not perfect. On the wall. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Try not to look at all the English writing in the background. Um, it's not great. The, the problem being, uh, we couldn't afford to bring Jennifer out to Bulgaria with us. No. So we I had mean, to even shoot if we those did, scenes. Even if we did bring Henrietta out to Bulgaria, she, she would have been very bored because yeah. there wasn't enough scenes. Yeah, true. Um, True, a lot of her, most of her scenes were yeah. over here, so, yeah, so she'd have mostly been sat around. Because um, uh, to, 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 be to, to an extent, um, Nick and Andrew were sat around yeah. uh, on, a, on a few of the days yeah. that we, we, was, we were doing a lot of stuff with. The, the Bulgarian postcard. Yes, yeah. which is brilliant, which yeah. I, I dearly love. The, That's we, funny. We, gave, um, we basically gave Andrew and Nick the camera for the two days that they were sat around and just said to them, just to film whatever, oh. go around and amuse yourselves. And uh, yeah, and they came out with just this slice of little comedy gold of just them doing a little commentary as they walk down to the to the set to meet us. Um, and yes, you will see Bulgarian postcards on the DVD somewhere. Yes, check it out. Yes, have a look. It's good fun. And it's all their own work. Well, apart from the editing, that was us. Yeah. But you know, 
uh, they shot that. That's just something they went off and filmed. Um, and it's great stuff. So, uh, the comedy stylings of Mr. Andrew Cleaver in there, uh, accompanied by Mr. Nicholas Oberlei. So, yep, so there we go. We've caught up to... We've now caught up to where they were the morning after. So now, yeah. by this point, you should be going, oh, okay, that's where it all fits together, if we've done our job properly. If not, you're still going, what, what was all that about? But, you know, we've tried. Yeah. <laughs> we can only do what we can. There's a, do you know what? There's a lot... Do you know what I've realised as I've been spending the last, you know, three years editing this? <laughs> there's a lot of bodily fluids in this film. There's a lot right. of spit and yeah. sick and piss and blood and yeah we've you know apart from the kind of key sexual ones we've covered all the bodily fluids really it's probably for the best we didn't go any further yeah so that sort of film oh painful <laughs> <laughs> yeah it should be pointed out it's been a while since Rich has looked at a lot of this so so it's all a little bit fresh to you isn't it after having had a bit of a break yeah from I've it. Got but it's nice to have some objectivity. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, some uh, new eyes looking at it. Yeah. Because my old, tired eyes have been looking at it quite a lot <laughs> over the last few years. <laughs> um. <laughs> this location was um, a kind of stroke of last minute genius because we spent a few days trying to work out what sort of cafe to go to. We looked at locations and they were too small or they weren't quite right. Too noisy yeah. on the road. To be honest, noise was the kind of key factor Probably the main them. This was the last um, piece in the puzzle. We couldn't work it out at all. And we went back and forth. We and thought, well, should we do it in the park somewhere? Yeah, yeah. should we change it? Should, should we, we change the location? Yeah. And then... Uh, was it you? Was it just kind of one morning when yeah. you were... Well, we were just walking back from being out trying to find a location <laughs> where we just thought, you know what? Why don't we just use the balcony at the hostel? There the place go. where we're staying. <laughs> and that's it. This is this kind of cafe scene here yeah. where they're meeting up the next up a little morning. Bit. Stuck a Bulgarian flag in the corner. Yeah. Bit of a hat stand. Table. A few bits and pieces. And we've turned the balcony at the, at the hostel, hostel into, yeah. a, into a cafe. So yeah, so we're back in the small Japanese soldier offices again now for these ones. That's yeah. that's our friend Liz in the background there. Um, that's um, my work inbox, and I've managed to scrub my name off of it. I think in the previous edit, I, it still said inbox Nick Kirk. <laughs> so you know, yeah, classy, classy, always good. Yeah. Oh look, big chunky screens. Yeah. Um, oh, and this man. scene's great. Yeah, oh, I scene. love this scene. It's a good scene. And, it's really uh, well shot and acted. And uh, yeah, Mark was another last minute. Yep. Last minute find. We had another guy, a friend of Mark English's, um, called Matt Wolf. Lined up for it. Lined up for this, and yep. he couldn't make it. And he suggested Mark Beardsmore to come in. And, yep. um And Mark was great. Just turned up on the day and, and knocked it out of the park. Yeah. And I, I hated this scene when we wrote it. Yeah. This was the exposition scene, and we rewrote it a couple of times. I still hated it on paper. Mm. And I just was like, oh, we've just got to get this one out of the way. Um, and then the two of them did it. And I was like, mm. oh, actually, this is really good. So it just shows you the difference yeah. good actors can make yeah. to um, our bad script. <laughs> <laughs> no, although, to be fair, I think we'd improved the script by the point that they were doing it as well. Yeah. But I think this was one of the scenes that we really went back and forth on a lot because it. It is an exposition scene. Yeah. And we wanted to try our best to make it not seem like a an info dump exposition type type scene. Because there's nothing worse than someone no. just sitting there and telling you what's yeah. going on. At least it's at the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at least at least you've sat through all the other stuff by now. You, you should know. be sold by now. <laughs> <laughs> Either like it or you don't. <laughs> So yeah, cause so all these scenes are kind of the another cameo uh, exposition. Your brother in the background. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. There, there he is, is there. lurking in the back, <laughs> behind Liz. Far too scruffy to work in an office. <laughs> <laughs> he he is actually far too scruffy to work in an office. <laughs> uh, um, that's what they told him at, at the um, 
National Institute of Officers. They said, um, I'm sorry, you, you're just far too scruffy for office work. Uh, musician. You have to be a musician, <laughs> I'm afraid. Uh, that's how they do it. That's yeah. how they assign them. Um, so, yeah, so these are kind of the expositional bits. I mean, when, it, when it came to the writing, I mean, I think, it's like we said, we we planned everything out between us to the kind of nth degree. Um, and then I went away and, and drafted it, then passed it to you, and you then sort of picked it all apart and redrafted it. Yeah. And then we just kind of fired it back and forth like that a few times. Yeah. So um, that took shape. And, and then, involved and then I kind of did a read through with with my brother and Liz. We kind of read it out between us and tweaked a lot of the dialogue from there because you begin to realise, you know, what you can and can't Actually say, say and what it, doesn't yeah. and doesn't work. Um, so we kind of tweaked it that way. Um, and then also, and also, we kind of tweak stuff as we were shooting it. You know, sometimes they suggest different lines. Yeah. Uh, there's a couple of little ad libs that we let in. Not many. No. Um, I mean, the main additions were um, Nick's lines are about ten times swearier than they were on the page. <laughs> um, he did a hell of a lot more swearing. Yeah. <laughs> than 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 it was as written. Um, But um, yeah, we didn't really change it a lot as we no. as we went along. Um, stuck the occasional thing in to, to kind of spice it up. We changed the occasional scene as we were going along as well with from from suggestions from the cast and crew. We were quite happy for them to suggest better ways to do things. Uh, I think one of the better one one of the best suggestions being um, Hannah's suggestion that we do the garden party scene. Yeah. Because um, we'd originally wanted to that do was, it what, a theater, in a theatre. Yeah, we wanted yeah. to do it like your kind of Oscar BAFTA ceremony type That's thing, right, yeah. with her. That was the other change. Her being nominated for the yeah. award and someone else getting it, and then and you know you just see her swearing and calling her a bitch. Hiring out of and it would have taken like a, you know hundred yeah. people and yeah. sat them down. And, um, yeah. just and Hannah said, "Well, what about just doing yeah. like an after party, after party thing with them talking about it?" Yeah. Um, which was genius, and I, and I think it's a much it's a much prettier, better shot. You know, it, I think it looks. I think it looks really nice. That sequence. Yep. I think, yeah. um, and I think we wouldn't have. We wouldn't necessarily have thought of that ourselves by that point, because you're that immersed mm. in it. You're that immersed in what you've originally thought it's going to be. You don't necessarily see a new way of doing it. No. Um, so I think that was the good thing about this film. I think everyone felt that they could. Um, they could chip in with stuff if they, if they felt they had something to. If they felt they had something to add, I think people felt they could chip in with it. <laughs> it's getting chased by a T Rex. <laughs> <laughs> that's the kind. That's the kind of better shot we did. That take a few times, and in the first one, the first one, Andrew really looks like he's being chased by something from Jurassic Park. He looks kind of terrified and like he's running away rather than running to try and find someone. Um, so we were going to CGI in the dance. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that might have been going a little bit too far. We hadn't had any dinosaurs in it up to then, <laughs> so that might have confused people. Um. Oops, should we pause it? So? Pause. <laughs> Did we do this on the same day as the bar scenes at the end? Did we kind of, or did we do it on a different night? I can't remember I can't anymore. Remember. To be honest, it's been that Too long ago. ago. <laughs> um, we were originally going to mock up a proper newspaper, weren't we, with um, yeah. the photograph of Ben being arrested on it? Yeah. But again, it's just kind of time and getting around to do it, getting around to doing it. Yeah. And I actually kind of prefer the little flash. Yep. flash images at the start of like the kind of pictures being taken yeah um those pictures in that first scene back at the start um of ben um were taken on the day of rehearsal that's right so they could be the first so that's actually the first, the first kind of thing in the film yeah that that's the first thing we did for mm. the film yeah yeah back when we did a kind of day-long 
rehearsal in, in Greenwich. Uh, kind of, you know, just did a whole read through a couple of times, didn't we? And picked up some key bits. Yeah, it was really important just mm. to make sure everybody gelled and could iron out any any issues at all that they had with the any any of the material there and then. I, I think if we'd just if we'd been able to, it would have been nicer to have just done more rehearsal time on the day. You know. Yeah. Yeah, we could have done more. We would have done, but um, we we just mm. didn't have that luxury of time. No. Um, it would have been nicer, I think, if we'd had a little yeah. bit more rehearsal time. We'd yeah. have possibly ironed out a few more bits and pieces before we started yeah. filming um, but by and large we could just set up get the makeup yeah get get the costume done and then just shoot yeah pretty People, much everyone you know, you know everybody knew what they were doing everyone knew what they had to get done so very professional in that in that regard oh yeah definitely yeah. definitely we didn't have to worry about that I think we made a slight mistake in giving Jay stubble because I think the length of his stubble does vary yeah, from time to time it's difficult to, to um, measure things like that mm. And I think in hindsight we'd have probably had him clean shaven. Yeah. Because he had to kind of maintain that same stubble thing for most <laughs> of the shoot. Um, which is quite tricky. Yeah. I think the, the, the thing about this scene as well is we wanted it to have a kind of slightly ambiguous ending you've kind of got the, right. you know, yeah. the what happens now um, and we kind of do we, we just wanted to leave it open for people you know it's up to you you know yeah where does it go from there you know it's up to you to decide if they still fra stay friends or not you know or you know what happens you know is will really telling the truth this time Ooh. you know mm. it's a possibility um, I, I think I know what happens to all of them Mm. But um, that's just my opinion. <laughs> so here we go. We're pretty much at the end. Um, yeah, wrapping up. Yeah, this is our this is our last scene. Back to back to the uni flashback, and just to kind of give it almost a little kind of extra twist in the whole Charlie betraying Ben thing. You know that yeah. they got off back in university days. Oh, I was a drunken snog. That's history. Exactly, and I, but I think it still gives it a bit of a an added kind of oof. dimension here. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I mean, do you think it's egotistical to end the film on a shot of your own face? Too far? Mm. Maybe, <laughs> maybe slightly. A little bit egotistical. No, I've sod it. Yeah. Well, I think it works. You know, it's too late. As long as my name comes up first. <laughs> <laughs> well, it does because it's alphabetical, but that's the only oh, reason I assure you. Um, we're kind of, actually, at this point, I would say that uh, the viewer is ahead of us. Because what the viewer is seeing is not what we're looking at right now. Mainly because uh, we haven't built the credits yet. So at this point, you're looking at the credits and, oh, look, there's so-and-so. -so -and. Oh, did they do that? And, oh, really? That's what they did. And, oh, that's who it was. We're actually just... Uh, we're looking, making this belt. Now. Yeah, we're, we're just yeah. winging it. Uh, we, we know there are credits. Yeah. Um, they'll be going up now. They'll be scrolling up the screen. They'll I probably imagine. be white or black. Yeah. yeah, I imagine they'll have yeah. words. The probably standard. probably names, people's names. Mm. Maybe even stuff they've done. Yeah. Um, and there will be plenty of thank yous in there. But I think the, I would have to say a huge thanks to the cast and crew, to everyone that worked on it. Absolutely. Because, yeah. um, you know, we might, have, well, we might have kicked it off, but without them, yeah. uh, we'd just be two blokes bumming around with a camera trying to get something done. Um, so they very much made this film what it is. So, yeah. Um, it's, it's thanks to them that it does look and play so good yeah 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 definitely, definitely. Um, yeah there's a lot of people put a lot of hard work into this yeah. and so um, I will uh, tip my hat and say thank you very much to you all I shall uh, doff mine my metaphorical hat yeah I haven't actually got a hat on either <laughs> I've got an actual hat I could go into the other room and get my hat and put it on yeah. and doff it but that seems like a little bit too much effort I don't think we need to be that little no. Um, and I'd also like to say thank you very much to you, the viewer, because if you're watching this, you're either well one of the cast and crew who got a complimentary copy and has decided to watch the commentary, yep. or you are a paying customer. And if you're a paying customer, thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Yes, we appreciate your custom, and uh, we like your money. 
Yes. Yes. Very nice. Muchly appreciated. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah. So uh, yeah. I think that's probably well, about it for yeah, our commentary. Thank you for really? watching. Yes. Uh, thank you for staying. Yeah. I, I've been end. Nick. I've been Rich. Yep. He certainly has. And uh, thanks. <laughs>